Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to address an issue that I know a lot of you who comment on my videos are often concerned about. The cost of iRacing. Most sim racers understand that the pricing model of iRacing is extremely aggressive. Over and above a subscription fee, each individual bit of content is priced expensively, with each track usually costing around £11 and each car £9, and that's before VAT is added. But what does this mean in practice if, like me, you want to progress through the rookie series and up through the various class licenses that structure the sim? Well in this video I'm going to break down exactly what I've spent in the sim to give you a real world example and hopefully make sure that any of you who are tempted to get into iRacing at least do so with your eyes open and with as much information as possible. First though, two caveats. Number one, I'm sure there might be ways of playing iRacing for less money, but I equally want to be clear. I've made my car and track selections using planning tools online to try and maximise the value I get from each bit of content. I've maximised bulk discounts where possible, used cash rewards for completing 8 official races across a season of racing, and as you will see, I've hardly gone mad in terms of the amount of different bits of content I've bought either. Because of all of this, I think my example is a fair one when illustrating the kinds of costs you're likely to incur if iRacing becomes your sim of choice. And number two, despite the cost associated with iRacing, I also want to be clear that I really enjoy the sim. I can't with a straight face suggest it represents value for money, although that will increase with use over time. But as someone for whom sim racing has become my main passion and hobby, I get a lot of joy out of iRacing. Despite some of the eye-watering sums that will follow, this isn't a video of me complaining that I've been ripped off, even if some of you will certainly conclude that I have been. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments. So let's start at the beginning with the subscription. If you're a first time subscriber to iRacing, there will be discounts you can take advantage of here, which is exactly what I chose to do in April 2021. I took out a two year membership to get the lowest monthly charge I could, confident that I'd want to keep playing throughout that period. After VAT was added, that came to $143.28. Now given I've been on the service for 11 months now, a quick bit of maths and currency conversion will tell you that so far the subscription to iRacing alone has cost me £49 in 11 months. Forgive me for those of you outside of the UK but from here on in all prices are going to be in pounds as it's my local currency. For that subscription fee you get all the cars and tracks you need to participate in any of the Road Oval Dirt Road or Dirt Oval Rookie series. But like most players, my aim was to get through the rookies as quickly as I could and into a fully fledged D-Class series. I also had my eye on creating a YouTube series, so I wanted to ensure I had the tracks for a full season of racing. So four races in, I made my first proper content purchase. The USF 2000 Formula Car and five tracks which would allow me to complete the full season. This purchase meant that I could take advantage of the bulk purchase discount of 15%, meaning in total the car and tracks came to £66. And that was me set for 8 weeks of racing in the USF 2000, as well as being able to participate in a number of Mazda MX-5 races in the Global Challenge series, as I already owned a number of pieces of content for that too. Two and a half months later a new season was beginning. I'd earned my C-Class license and although I intended to continue my USF 2000 exploits, I wanted to run another series alongside it that would also utilise the tracks I'd already bought. So I made my second content purchase, utilising the $4 I'd earned in iRacing participation credits and another bulk purchase discount of 10% to buy the McLaren GT4 and three additional tracks. In total, after tax, these purchases came to £42, bringing my total spend after just three months on content alone to £108 for two cars and eight tracks. Before we continue, if you're finding this breakdown helpful, please do leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more sim racing guides, reviews and racing. Three months later and it's time for Season 4 of 2021 and armed with a newly minted B-Class license, another content purchase. 
This time I decided to go for the Ferrari GT3 Evo to gain eligibility to the various GT3 series on offer and the Dallara P217 prototype together with two additional tracks. After utilising another $4 of participation credits and a 10% bulk purchase discount, the cost of these purchases came to £40, meaning a running total on content alone of £148 at the 6 month mark. Another season came and went and I stopped making as much content for the channel from iRacing for a while, and instead focused on picking up races here and there where I was interested in the combinations on offer. At the beginning of 2022, I had no real ambition to add any content whatsoever, that is until I saw TCR cars had arrived in the sim. Having watched a couple of reviews, my hand was back in my wallet and I purchased the Honda TCR car and two further tracks. Once again, I'd taken advantage of a 10% bulk buying discount, meaning the total cost of these purchases was £34, leading to a new running total of £182 spent on 4 cars and 12 tracks. And that takes us up to the present day and a total spend on iRacing subscription fees and content of £231. Which, by any standard, is a large sum of money, comfortably more than double what I've spent on any other sim for dramatically less content. I mean probably by an order of 10. All told I now have access to 21 cars across all class types and 34 tracks within the iRacing service, albeit many of those I will never use as I'm not planning to utilise dirt oval or dirt road racing anytime soon. Now the theory goes the need to top up on content should diminish every season, as tracks often appear across season schedules multiple times before being rotated, and car eligibility remains fairly stable between championships too. But the reality is despite being over £200 in, I own a tiny fraction of the tracks in iRacing, and so to run anything like full seasons in even one of the cars I already own will likely require me to buy 2-3 to three tracks minimum per season for some time to come. In other words, another £20-40 to £40 pounds every three months. Equally, the more I race, the more value, quote unquote, I get for my spend, and assuming several years of using the service regularly, that does become a valid perspective to take. The quality of the content, especially the tracks, is excellent, in most cases best in class across all of sim racing, in my opinion, and the scale and reliability of the online servers is also unparalleled. However, let's also be clear, these purchases are tied to my subscription. To use them, I must have a live subscription, which means an ongoing cost, even without new content purchases. Which is why some people I know refer to iRacing as iRenting, or even iRansom. So there you go, in 11 months of iRacing I've spent £231 and if you want to enjoy even a tiny slice of the content on offer, that's very likely the kind of money you will need to spend too over a similar period. So have I lost my senses and gone mad? Am I so far into iRacing now that I have to find a way to justify my expenses? Well, one way or another, I suppose most of us who sim race find ourselves occasionally needing to justify expenses or time committed to our passion. However, that's not the purpose of this video. If not exactly delighted with the figures involved, I am comfortable with the choices I've made getting into iRacing, and given the fact that I love open lobby online racing, but as a dad have extremely limited time to race, usually very late into the evenings, iRacing provides me with a service that right now I just can't find elsewhere. But I do feel like if I'm going to celebrate and showcase the enjoyment I have on iRacing on YouTube, I've got a responsibility to also highlight the specific costs involved so that any of you watching who are then tempted to try it out for yourself at least can do so with the benefit of my experience in mind. I really do hope this has been useful to you, let me know what you think in the comments and if you've enjoyed the video leave a like, get subscribed and I will see you on the next one.